Right, hello, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be carrying on with our landscape series, um, this time having a look at an automatic landscape material, so how we can use data from the landscape um, model itself um, in the material to sort of automatically paint layers such as this snow, sand, and then also this sort of cliff face, uh, and then how we can combine that with the landscape painting to give ourselves full control over the whole system. So. Um, let's get started. I'm going to start with a new material, um, Auto Landscape Tutorial. Uh, just assign this on, uh, and there is going to be a, quite a lot of shader compiling today. Uh, hopefully, it's not going to cause too much problem with the um, codec and encoding. Um, I might just have to keep pausing and, and restarting the video, which is a little bit tedious, but there we go. Um, Fine, so let's get started with this material though. So, um, first thing I want to talk about is the landscape chords node. So, um, we've used landscape layer chords before. Um, if I just plug it into the base color, um, I wonder if I can just preview it on here without having to recompile. Not really. Um, hopefully, it won't take too long. Recompile um, won't cause too much of an issue. But, landscape layer chords, we just apply it to our material. Here it is all gone completely w sort of yellow. Um, there is a little bit, let's just hide the water plane for now, um, a little bit of data here um, and then everything else is gone um, sort of flat yellow colour. Now what's happening here is Unreal's failing to display numbers that are greater than one. If we stick into emissive colour rather than base and then quickly compile that, everything's going to start glowing really bright. So when you're doing tests and debugging it's a good idea to use emissive rather than base colour because then you can see when bloom is causing that kind of like, um, or whether the values over 1 are causing this kind of blooming. Uh, and if we just chuck a quick frac node in here, um, this is the fractional component. So what it's going to do is going to discard any of those whole numbers um, and just keep things repeating 0 to 1 and we'll start to being able to see the tiling of our landscape coordinates across our, um, across our mesh. So um, what it's doing here is it's taking a top-down projection if I go above and look down, you can see it's pretty uh, uniform squares. If we go down, look from a side-on view, here they're getting stretched up. Um, and that's controlled in here in mapping type. So it's set to automatic. Um, if we, That's the same as XY. If I just compile that, you'll see there's no difference. Um, give it a second. There we go. Um, if we change that, let's say, to XZ, so if we look at our gizmo down here, XZ, that's going to be basically the camera face that we're, or the camera direction we're looking at now. And what we'll get is nice squares here, um, nice uniform distribution here, and then some weirdness going on because we're projecting um, sort of along an axis that doesn't really make sense for for the landscape. So um, you can use landscape coordinates, you totally can. Um, they have some other little nice features in here, so mapping scale, you can, you can multiply um, and it will scale up or down your um, your UVs, similarly rotation uh, and, and movement. Here we go. Um, but you can also just build your own version of this using well position, and we'll do that now. So if I replace that with a well position node, what this will do will give us the um, the coordinates of every pixel in the material. So if I just drop in a cube here, every object in Unreal has coordinates. Well, every pixel has coordinates as well. And if I mask out with the component mask, the red and green components of my uh, my ball position. What we'll find, if give it a sec to compile, um, looks like a total mess. Well, there's a problem. If we zoom right in, we might be able to see what it is. It's taken that UV square and it's mapping it over every single centimeter. Units in Unreal one unit is one centimeter in UV space. One unit is one whole tile of of texture. Um, so it's done what we want. It's done a top-down projection, but it's done it at a very, very small scale. Um, but that's easy enough to fix. We can just divide by a very big number. And if I take this and divide by, let's say, 2048, not 204, um, we'll get a result that maybe makes a bit more sense. It's probably too big now. 
Um, but now we can see we're getting the same thing, that top-down projection. So I'm just going to parameterize this, make it nice and easy to edit. Let's see, 512, and see what that looks like. And there we are, we get full control. Obviously we can scale this up and down. And it means we can have different materials, sort of different layers at different scales. Um, what's really nice about this though, is if you're making something like a grass uh, for your landscape, and then you also have like a rock or a tree that has a bit of a, a base around it, you can use a world space projected material and you can use the same material on the same object um, and project it down. So, um, so let's just create a quick grass texture. So I'm just going to use base color for this tutorial, keep things simple. Um, obviously anywhere I'm using base color you could replace with um, the full base color normal, uh, all the details you want for your material layer. And where I'm going to be using lerps to blend things together, you could obviously use blend material attributes as I've shown in other videos. So, um, so there we are, we have our grass, it's projected down. Um, it's getting a little bit stretchy here. Obviously it's projecting along that um, that side axis and we'll fix this later. But um, but before I go into uh, the sort of more projection-y based automatic layers, I want to do a height based one. That seems to be the simplest thing to do. So um, I'm going to create a basic white color. I'm going to call that snow. Again, obviously you can make your materials uh, nice and pretty, but for the sake of, of the tutorial we'll keep it simple. Um, and we're going to use the same wall position. So this is giving us the per pixel data. Um, here we've used the red and green channels as a top down projection. But if I do a mask and just take the blue channel, remember red, green and blue, X, Y and Z, they're basically interchangeable in terms of how the math understands them. So, so it's masking out blue, actually what we're getting is the Z height and Unreal's nicely color coded them for us here. If we just preview that in base color, and give it a sec to compile. Um, say I apologize if all these stutters are a little bit annoying. Um, that's in a missive. Let's get rid of that. Just see the mask on its own. Um, similarly to here, they're very big numbers. But we're getting here, this is where at the world zero. So you can see part of my terrain is underground or under under zero, um, and then part of it is above. Um, this would be quite useful for sand, and we'll do that for sort of like a beach level uh, layer in a minute. But we're starting off with snow, so I need to move this up. So to do that, I'm just going to add a value. Simple as that. Um, I'm going to call this I don't know snow offset, snow height, something like that. Um, and again, if I just compile. A sec. Uh, now I have controls over where my starting position is. Um, it might be you want to invert this. We're putting negative numbers in. It should be maybe be a subtract node instead, but it gives us a control, and that's kind of all that really matters. Um, well, I say that. Let's not do that. Let's actually do a subtract. So that our offset value, if we rename this to height, it makes sense. Make things nice and easy for people who are going to use our our materials that probably isn't going to be us, or might not be us. Always good to bear in mind that other people are using your work, especially team situations. Make it nice and easy. Now we have a height value. Well, that's a very uh, straight line. Um, similarly to the other UVs values though, there is actually a gradient here, if I can zoom right into it. But it's only one centimeter's worth of grey. Goes from black to white over one centimeter. Well, most snows a bit more. Uh, spread out than that, so we just want to um, divide by a large value again, or divide by a value, so snow height and snow, let's say scale, that's a good word. Connect this up, and I'm just going to set this down, set it down to 1 for now, won't make any changes, dividing by 1 obviously does nothing, but now once that's compiled I can scale this up, and you can see we're getting a bit more control over the fall off. So control where the height of the snow is and control the fall off. Now if you've been watching the last few videos you'll see that we made a nice handy material function the other day. If we go here, add noise to gradients. Now what I have here is some gradients. No, 
uh, nice procedurally generated gradients there. If I do this, it's going to add some noise. Connect to the base color. Um, and we're just using again a texture that's been projected in world space, I believe. Maybe it's not, maybe it's in UV space. But we're just taking that and adding some noise to an edge. And you can see there's a couple of errors here in our in our result. Uh, well, firstly it's quite high resolution. Might want to control that. Well I've got a control for that in noise tiling. But we're getting this kind of band. Well what's happening here is these values down here, these are negative. So we just need to do a quick clamp or a quick saturate. Um, to get rid of any negative values. And then if we apply this, hopefully we're just going to get white at the top and then black all the way down with a little bit of noise in the middle. And we do, which is great. So again, we control the scale of the noise. Uh, snow noise tiling. And now, because I'm using, this is using UV space, well, let's just apply it and then we'll edit it and see real time our results. But um, this noise is being used in UV space. We might need to make a version of this that works specifically for landscape that either uses a top down projection or landscape coordinates. Um, but here, a very small value, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, is giving us our noise. And remember, this is just a mask between two materials. So although it might look a bit low raised and stretched here, once we've actually applied a, a texture to these layers, um, it's going to sort of hide that that value but but there we are we've got something that gives us full control over where our snow height is um, and if you're building a big landscape or you're doing a lot of landscaping you aren't going to want to spend ages painting every single um, little corner of the world um, especially if you're using sort of procedural generation something like that um, so a few auto layers can help uh, create a sort of first pass um, and work quite nicely so um, that works for our auto height mask, but let's say we want to paint a little bit of snow. Maybe this is picking up here. We don't necessarily want to just bring this down. We could, it works, but, but let's say we want to um, edit this manually with the paint layers. Well, we can do that. So we, we covered this last week. Uh, if I do a sample, landscape layer sample, and I'm just going to sample a layer that I've called snow. And if I um, just add that, to my automatic noise layer and then I'm still going to use the same noise gradient what we should get uh, what we might get is an error because I've already been painting our my my layer yep there we go well we've definitely got a result what's going on here then so my painted layer of snow uh, it's already got values in it so I'm just going to clear that value set that to black and there we are, back to where we were. And if I paint now a little bits of snow, and I can add to my layer. So I've got all the control of the landscape layer system. I can paint wherever I want, create little patches of snow. But I've also got this automatic layer that's just going to pick up the sort of the height-based um, parts for me. This is good. This might be enough, depending on what you're doing. Um, but at the moment. We can only add snow to this sort of existing system. Uh, we can't take away any snow that's already there. And there is a, a nice little trick. We could create another layer that was called no snow or, I don't know, snow minus or whatever, um, and use that. But actually, we can use the same data um, and we can kind of like unpack it. So what we're going to do, um, if I think about the value ranges here, my values in snow are currently 0 to 1. But actually, I want negative numbers so I can subtract as well as positive numbers. So I'm just going to unpack this this value range from minus one to one into no, sorry, from zero to one into minus one to one. So to do that, I first subtract 0.5, and now my value range here is now negative 0.5 to 0.5, and you can see then if I multiply by two, what we're going to get is a range of minus one to one. That's the wrong way around. Two goes in there. Minus one to one. Not minus minus one. Here we go. Um, so what's that going to mean? Well, basically, anywhere we've painted black was going to be zero. Zero then becomes minus point five, minus one, and that's going to paint away any masks we've got. Uh, and anywhere we've painted one, one goes to point five, stays at one, and that's going to add in. Um, 
on top of this. So we might just want to saturate this again. Remember, saturate is a uh, clamp that clamps exactly between zero and one. Um, that's basically free on modern hardware. So feel free to saturate as many times as you like uh, where you need to. Um, and what we will find now, and this is as compiled. We've lost our snow on top, so the painting away is working. Well, why has that happened? It's because we're um, the values are now wrong. So what you need to do is have a mid gray, a 0.5 value everywhere, and the 0.5 value is just going to use exactly the height map, or the sorry, the automatic height based snow, and then we're going to have be able to paint one to add snow and zero to take snow away. So we can use here this use target value. Now I'm painting exactly 0.5, and I know that. Make my brush a bit bigger, 2048, and paint. And you can see I've painted away my additional snow. That's probably fine. And painted in. So I've now got the full height-based system. Sadly, although there's a fill and a clear, there's no fill with 0.5, so we have to do it with a brush. But um, that's probably fine, depending on your scale of your landscape, I suppose. Um, but now we've done that. If we turn this off, use my tool strength. Let's put that down maybe to 0.5, smaller brush. I can paint the snow on top just by clicking and then control click, oops, sorry, shift click to take away. I can paint away on my snow line here. Um, and so it's now full control by us, but we've also got that initial first pass layer. And if you ever want it back, back to the to default, you can just do 0.5, paint target 0.5, and there it is. Which is pretty cool. It's a pretty good uh, system, and we can do the exact same thing um, for for sand, for sort of as many height-based layers as you want. So let's firstly let's just finish this off. So again, I'm going to be using a lerp just because I'm lerping between two uh, vectors here. Um, so black is grass, white is snow. Base color, okay. Um, but obviously, if you were doing, um, give it a sec to compile. Okay. Um, obviously, if you were doing, um, what was I going to say? Got my thread. Yes. Obviously, if you were doing material parameters up here, you'd be doing blend material attributes and, and material attributes there. So exact same workflow, um, but picking up normal maps and, and roughnesses and all those exciting things. Um, so here we are. We have our snow on our grass. That works quite well automatic but with control uh, and we can just do the exact same thing for sand so um, take the same mask let's do copy now in this case I'm gonna have to go through and rename everything and hopefully you can see quite quickly you're able to build up a um, my typing right type and talk at the same time it's not possible sand underscore height. We'll just stick that back down to zero. Sand scale probably wants to be, I don't know, 150 maybe. We'll probably can't keep the tiling the same. Public sand. Let's just preview this. Um, so this should have the right values in. Uh, I've already painted my landscape in my preliminary. Um, but you can see quite quickly, you can go in and create uh, height-based layers. Um, most realistic terrain has some height-based logic to it. You tend to get snow on top of mountains, you tend to get sand lower down. Um, you could create kind of a deep sand or a deep underwater layer, and then a, a shoreline layer, and then maybe a, a grassland, some hills, some mountains, all that, all based on height. Um, and you do have to sort of think about the logic of which one comes after which. Um, but generally they aren't going to sort of interact, you aren't going to get sand on mountains, snow underwater, that kind of thing. So here we ha might have uh, one little thing to do. Um, so in this case our mask is saying that black is sand and white is going to be our sort of existing um, part. Now that's fine, we have the control of that, but if we want to um, logically have where we paint white to be sand, um, we might need to just invert our sand sample, so just a one minus. And now, where you're painting white in the sand layer, you're going to get white sand, and when you're painting black, you'll you'll remove sand. Um, and you can see over here in this kind of little alcovey bit, um, I've painted that in and out. 
So now the, the sampled layer has been inverted just so that it makes more sense logically. But realistically, whoever's painting is going to know that they're either painting or not painting the sand because they'll see the result. Um, so I don't have a sand texture in here. So I'm just going to cheat and use a basic colour. I call this sand. I'm going to make it sort of a sort of sandy colour. That'll do. Um, obviously you can take a bit more time over the artistic side of your materials. So here we have our sand mask and then black is our sand, white is our existing layers push that to base colour and due to the magic of copying and pasting it's really not taking very long to put another sort of dynamic automatic height layer in um, and there we are Okay, just compiled. We have sand along the shoreline. If I just unhide my water plane, this is a flat plane at zero, um, and you can see I've got a little bit of sand coming above, above that. And we have full control to change the scale. We can sort of recede the shoreline, as it were. Um, we could bring this up if we wanted to create more of a sort of desert island type, um, or we could even bring it down if we wanted to be under water for some reason. Maybe it looks like it's flooded. That is working. Here we go. Um, but probably want to be a little bit high for now. Maybe 15, 20. Uh, and what's nice about this is obviously it's taking the data from the landscape. So yes, we can go in and paint our, our sand layer and paint more or less sand on this. But we could also just go into the Sculpt tool. If we go into Sculpting and Sculpt, if I sculpt the sand, the beach up, eventually, once it gets high enough, it's going to turn to automatically have Let's pick a bit that doesn't have any painting on as well. Um, I can push the the beach back by just bringing the terrain down, so it's all automatic. And if you remember the grass node from one of the other videos, we could also have little meshes be spawning on this, and that's going to come through um, where we've done things with our samples. Um, that's a bit more complicated because you you aren't actually painting grass here, so. Um, a bit more set up to that but but it's all doable um, so that's height height works quite well like I say uh, a lot of terrain has height layers to it but um, here we've got some stretching uh, and we probably don't want grass all the way up the side of the mountains that seems like a silly idea um, so let's fix that next so if we open up our material so here where I've got my grass layer I'm just gonna bring this out and add some more detail to that. So first thing I need to do is create a mask that now tells my um, tells my terrain, tells my my material, my texture um, to see whether I'm facing upwards. So here I'm doing a world space top-down projection. Um, and if I do the dot product between the vertex normal and 001 um, dot product is a way of comparing the direction of two vectors uh, I've done a whole video about the dot product so go and watch that one um, but basically if I just preview it on here it'll give you white if things are facing the same direction uh, negative one if they're facing the other direction and zero if they're sort of perpendicular to each other so so this now is giving me an up mask where I'm comparing it against the world up direction zero, zero, 001 again blue um, and you can see we're getting a nice mask here. So if I use this, um, I'm just going to add a contrast, give myself some control, I'll call this up mask contrast. And if I just preview this in base color, have a look at it on my terrain. Again, give it a second to compile. There we are. Um, nothing's too horizontal. No, sorry, nothing's too vertical. So there's no dark values here. But you can see maybe you're getting a white here and a more mid grey. And if I just bump up the contrast to something like four or five, you can see we're getting those real kind of white bits where things are pushing up, and black where the sort of the cliffs are. And so we can use this to mask between different layers. Um, same thing automatically and this is obviously going to respond to the terrain as, as the terrain gets sculpted um, and what works quite well so if we then change this to a rock I think I've got a rock texture 
walk slate, that'll do. Um, and we're going to do the same thing, but this time with our UVs, we don't want it to be top down projection, we want to use a side on projection. So um, just changing the mask value. So looking at my viewport, it's the XZ axis, well, X and Z is red and blue, allocated there, uh, and then we're just going to use this mask here to lerp between them. So black is stone, white is grass. If I just preview this only in the base colour, we're going to lose our sand and our um, our snow for a second, but that's fine. All the data is still there. We can just plug it back in in a minute, um, and there we are. We get a nice projection, and because we're projecting this horizontally, we get a nice UV alignment here. Maybe the scale is a bit low. Change it 1024, maybe. Um, and it blends nicely with the grass. Now, obviously there is a problem. We're only projecting this from the front. If we look at the sides of our mountain, that's probably not going to work. So actually we need to do another um, sort of set of logic, basically exactly the same. If I take my rock projection and just change this to be now in green-blue, this is going to be projecting along the other side. Um, and I take my, my sort of projection mask and I take this down here and I want to now compare this to the other angle. So I can compare this to red, for example. So preview this, you're going to get anything that's in the red axis is 1, anything that's not in red uh, is 0. Um, and we want this to be double sided, so uh, what we're going to do is to stick in an abs node here, ABS. Um, and now we've got values of white on both sides. So this is just ignoring the negative values, taking anything negative, making it positive, uh, and then contrasting that. So let's see if we can get these the right way around. So we're going to use this as our mask to blend between our two stone projection textures. And if you've done this right on the preview, we get a nice texture with no real smearing. It gets a little bit blurred maybe in the 45 degree angles because we're sort of blending two projections together, but that can't really be helped. Um, everything on top is still wrong, but that's fine because we're going to blend a new thing on top. And everything on the bottom is still wrong, but actually terrain isn't upside down. We're never underneath terrain, um, so that really doesn't matter. Um, and then if we plug this into our grass blender, and we get grass on top, rock all the way around, nice smooth projections everywhere. And then we can take that value, plug that into this lerp here, and this is where we add the snow and this is where we add the sand. So, final thing, might just stick a few comments on this. So this is grass and rock world space projection and then we have snow height mask spelt height wrong, there we are and sand height mask just fix that Yeah. Uh, obviously, as I said, you could upgrade your material to have better materials than just using base colour as I am, and blend these together using blend layer nodes. Um, and similarly, if you wanted to have more control here, you could take the same premise of, of sampling a, a, a rock layer um, and just use it to affect the masks. So between this value here and between this value here, um, anything that's being a mask that's going into an alpha of a, a blend, um, we could add a layer to it. Um, so I just compile that, give it a second. And there we are. Final result. So maybe not the most uh, artistic um, as it could be, but we're getting um, a nice well presented rock texture on the sides, a nice grass uh, projecting up. All of this is fully dynamic, um, and then we also have this little control to go in and paint and add a little bit extra bits of snow, or take it away with artistic control where we want or don't want extra bits of sand. So a really nice way to work with landscapes. Um, if you're doing, like I say, procedure-generated worlds, uh, you kind of need to build heuristics like this. 
if you're doing something that's absolutely huge it's quite difficult to then go in and manually paint everything um, but also just as a basic layer it works quite nicely to create um, a base layer for you to then go in and, and add more stuff on top of um, so um, so yeah hopefully that's been helpful um, if you are making landscapes uh, join me next time I think we're going to do one more video on landscapes just talking about how we can use material techniques to break up some of this tiling um, landscapes obviously really big uh, expanses of the same textures um, or layer type landscape types um, so there's a few things we can do to help break up tiling for that um, but as always yeah if you have any questions um, let me know um, questions comments etc uh, and also I have a patreon so if you're really enjoying these videos and you are learning from them um, please maybe go over and, and support me uh, I'd love to do more put more time into these um, so that would be a really big help uh, yeah thanks very much I will see you all next time